There are all kinds of ninjas in this world. Good ninjas, bad ninjas, kid ninjas, turtle ninjas. And when it comes to ninjas, there's a few things they all have in common, like style, quickness, and grace under pressure. So what should you do should you ever come across a ninja in a pickleball match? Stick around. We'll break it down. Here's how this works. You send us highlights, great plays, good plays, and not so good plays. With the help of Coach Alex Fox, we break it down. You learn, we watch, and we all get better. This is Pickleball Breakdown. Let me set this up. We've got Matthew and Ron on the near side, and Sudi and Paul on the far side for this play. But Alex and I have decided that we're gonna call Matthew the Vegas Ninja. So when we talk about Ninja, it's Matthew. So Ninja and Ron in the near court, Sudi and Paul in the far court. When I first saw this play and I saw Matthew and his ninja moves just, or even cat-like, he was so quick to just, just move up and, and he was so, he played so confidently and so sure of himself in that point. I was enthralled by that, but you had a different take than that. What was your first response, Alex? Be honest. <laughs> um, so I believe my exact words were slap happy. <laughs> that's what it I was. Said. I think it was slappy and sloppy is what you called it. <laughs> slap, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I said it was to my, slap to happy and sloppy. The first thing initially when I watched that play was, obviously it was a high uh, drop shot attempt uh, from the ninja himself. And, um, but then he chose to kind of move forward on that and attack the fifth ball, which is typically a no-no. Uh, but Paul, in that sense, he didn't do a whole lot with uh, that elevated drop from, uh, from Matthew. So I think Matthew actually made a pretty good read on that ball. I don't know if he's played with Paul a lot or if he knows his game and kind of knows his strengths and weaknesses maybe but it almost looked like he had some sort of ninja sense that and knew that he was going to be able to move in and, and pounce on something. And once the attack started, they just they just kept going. How do you develop ninja sense? Is that something you can drill? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. So what you're going to want to do is... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have another play from this foursome. All right. On this second point, Paul and Sudi decide to stay away from the ninja, at least at first. But then when their attention goes to him, it stays on him, first with a few soft shots, and then it gets progressively harder, and then it finally finishes up with the big slam right here by Sudi to end the point. So one thing you want to do to ninjas, if you ever come across one, is typically keep it low, first and foremost. Uh, you don't want to give them anything that they can bring the fight to you on, um, which that was a, a, a pretty uh, bold speed up by Sudi, um, going middle there, knowing that, uh, that the ninja would be covering that. That was a missed opportunity, uh, I think, from Matthew. It looked like he was ready and geared up for it, but he chose to kind of block it, but it was way too high to, to block. Better would have been... It just better would have been to throw a counter attack. Step right into yes. it? Send that right back to where it came from or or put it right down the middle probably. Yeah, because he was in he was in the right position. Like he, he's moving over the ninja. He's covering middle because he sends the ball over to Sudi. And he understands his partner Ron is, is camping out on, on the line in that situation. So he covers middle. He could have taken another half step over towards the middle so he's not reaching. And that kind of goes into that mentality uh, of the my side, your side that doesn't work at uh, at the higher levels. But as you're you know leveling up, you want to get better about not thinking about my side, your side, but what's the best shot for our team in this situation. It was after that miss though when that when he went sort of that soft push over to Sudi. That's when they started to go hard at the ninja. Sudi comes back with a hard backhand that. Ninja blocks, then Paul comes out with a hard forehand that Ninja's able to get a paddle on again, uh, and then it's just two shots later, and then Sudi's got that 
wonderful overhand smash. So ninjas are only scary in a in a traditional sword fight. If you got if you had a gun or a rifle against a ninja, now you have the advantage. So I wouldn't be so scared there. So they got some elevated balls that they were able to do something with, hit down on. Um, at, at that point, ninja or not, um, yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be coming for you. Let's talk about Sudi's smash. He showed some ninja-like moves there, at least light on his feet to get back and get up on that ball. Right, and that just goes to show, like I've talked about in the past, that uh, the, the power from that wrist snap on the overhead is so crucial. And a lot of players just try to muscle through it and, and just use all arm, but it, it's really, it's just, it's being in the right position, yeah. Uh, but as you saw, even here with the fadeaway, is that wrist snap is able to get plenty of pop and, and he hit it just about as well as he could. Yeah, well, so fun fun points. They were short points, but fun points from our, our friends at Durango Hills. And uh, thanks, Matthew, for being a good sport and, and, and showing us your ninja moves. 